Okay, um, this is my design for a plasma thruster. Obviously, it's not drawn to scale. Um, I don't know, actually, I don't even know how big it might be. Um, maybe five feet by 12 feet, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how big it would be. I'd have to build it and find out, you know, measure and full round with it, but... The basic principle is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Number one is the opening that um, kind of funnels all the gases and stuff in from the air. It takes, um, angles them directly to the magnetic turbine on the front, like I explained in one of my earlier videos. Magnetic turbine will attract any um, magnetic gases in the atmosphere as well. Um, it'll pull them in. That'll that's be the first stage to a compressor, and the compressor will go along this whole entire thing. It'll be like a 10, 10 to seventeen stage compressor. There will be a rod connecting the compressors to a uh, turbine in the back that'll rotate in the opposite direction as the compressor and the uh, magnetic turbine. Um, sucking energy in the system, forcing more energy in. Um, there will be a system of channels that will be angled at the at, at the um, back of the turbine that will collect all the gases and everything. It will channel them into an ionizing chamber, which will beam electrons out of a hot cathode, and the magnetic field will pull the positive uh, Positrons, not the positrons, well, protons and electrons, creating uh, neutrons. The neutral gases will go through a vortex chamber where the magnetic fields will vortex them into a compression, uh, we're compressing them further basically into a heating unit. The heating unit will superheat the gases to the plasma state, um, maybe 1 million degrees or more, and they'll be channeled into a series of magnetic confinement chambers. The magnetic confinement chambers will make sure the plasma doesn't touch any of the chambers and it will confine and can, um, compress the plasma so that when it is released from magnetic confinement out of the funnel, the funnel can be computer controlled and angled to, for maximum thrust. That's my basic idea. Oh, and in the um, compression unit here, Hydrogen gas and xenon will be introduced along with the nitrogen, carbon, um, you know, all the gases in our atmosphere. Um, there will be two systems here. There will be a backup supercooling chamber and a primary supercooling chamber. In case one of the primaries fails or the liquid nitrogen heats up too, um, too hot, the backup will kick in so the whole uh, system doesn't explode or, you know, backfire. If it does, there will be an emergency shutoff switch once it reaches a specific temperature that it automatically shuts off so nothing catastrophic happens, if in case something like that could happen. But this is also a work in progress. Um, now, I was thinking of putting these on my triangular craft, because I designed a triangular spacecraft. Now, you remember the magnetic turbine that I showed you? And how I said in my video, put it on a swivel? Okay, well, at each point in the triangle, put a magnetic turbine, but make them a little bigger so that they can levitate and hover, well, not levitate, but hover the craft. Make them, um, you know, enough sized at each point. In the back of the triangle, will be two plasma thrusters. 
No. The um, these motors, uh, blah, 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 no turbines, will have. A shield at the bottom of them uh, from the outside. Wow. From the outside will be a dome, but on the inside it'll be a cone, which can be controlled via computer to angle it to open and close the retina basically for maximum thrust. The cockpit will be towards the center at the top because it'll kind of come up like this from the side and flatten out. Just like, just like that. The cockpit would be in the front and um, right in the middle, kind of towards the back, will be the anti-gravity unit. See so the anti-gravity unit inside the super cooling chamber. And that is my triangular craft idea. Um, I have one more design for a space, well, two more actually, my most advanced version which is controlled by thought, well, the navigation system is, it uses um, a telepathic link to a supercomputer to allow for dimensional, more precise dimensional travel, because you can't really map dimensions unless you use math, so you need a supercomputer. But um, I have another design that uses sound to vibrate the ship into another dimension. But, um, I haven't really perfected it yet, so I don't want to post it on the internet. But in due time, thank you for watching.